Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. All I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing, yeah. Every blessing you pour out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. On the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in my offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say. Blessed be the name 
takes away everything that stands in between us and him. He gives every good and perfect gift and he removes everything that hinders love. So take it all away, Lord, anything that hinders us from putting you in the first place, from loving you first. Remove everything that hinders our heart from seeing you and giving you preeminence in our lives, Lord. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, bless it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. my ways. 
revelation in our hearts that I know you love me. We are sons and daughters. I know you love me. At the cross I bow my knee where your blood was shed for me. There's no greater Glory fills the highest place. What can separate me now? No, no. At the cross I bow my knee. Where your blood was shed for me. There's no greater love than this. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest place what can separate me now you go
falls from my eyes you stand before me because I I can stand before you and know that you love me, Lord, I know you love me, yes, I know you love me. At the cross I bow my knee, where your blood was shed. on a veil you made a way when you said that it is done you turn a veil you made a way when you said that it is done you turn
God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. God is a living God. Our God is an active God. satisfied within your presence I sing beneath the shadow of your To see your beauty, to find you in the place your glory dwells. One more time, Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. 
one thing I ask and I would seek to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells better Better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Yeah. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. My heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water to my soul. I've tasted and I've seen. Come once again to me. I will draw nearer to you. Let's cry. I'd rather be a door holder in the house of my God. I'd rather be a door holder in your house, Lord. Than the seat of honor with the scornful Jew. I'd rather clean the toilets in your house, God. I'd 
rather scrub the baseboards with a toothbrush. <laughs> My mom used to make me do that when I got in trouble. In your house, just to be in your house. Your house is better. Your way is better. Your glory is better. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Lord, I just ask you to help us to know that by the spirit of wisdom and revelation in our hearts. Open the eyes of our hearts to see that better is one day. That we don't lose anything to follow you. We only lose things that are holding us back from being who you created us to be in the first place. We give a radical yes to you unfiltered yes, unhindered obedience to you, Lord, no compromise, but let it flow from the place of delight, God, where we see and know and delight ourselves in the Lord, that better is one day with you, better is one day with you, your way is better, your house is better. Your glory is better. Your honor is better. Your love is better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Could I have a little low light this morning? Um, yeah, and if the guys or women if, uh, servers would want to go ahead and pass the communion around, that'd be great. And I'll take a cracker. <laughs> I don't want to open. Yeah, 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 a cracker. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's a struggle sometimes to open those little things up here. <laughs> they make sure nobody uh, puts anything in them. They're, they're tight. <laughs> I just love uh, today the... Andrea, you're back! Yay! <laughs> um, it, we sang all about the nature of God how awesome he is, how faithful he is, how good he is, how much better it's to be with him than any other place and how worth it all, how worth it all it is to follow him. He is worthy. And as we go into communion, I was uh, considering Abraham and, you know, the Lord, God just had him go, <laughs> leave everything. And we go, yeah, but he was Abraham. Angels showed up and he got to talk to them. And <laughs> do you think it was easy? 
we think that it's hard. But he's our father. He's Father Abraham. We are his descendants. Is it no surprise that we are called to walk forth in faith and trust and hope in the light of who God is? That's the, that's the key. It's the light of who he is. And there's just a lot of scriptures about the light. You're the light of the world, a city and a hill that cannot be hidden. He is the light of the world, and his light is in us. Once we were in darkness, but now we've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. What does light represent? Seeing. Darkness, it, it represents salvation, redemption, wholeness in Christ, but it, it means we can see. Does it mean we can see the land before us? No, it means that we see Jesus. Darkness means you don't see Jesus. You don't understand his ways. You walk blindly in your own ways and you think you're in the light. But walking in the light means I see Jesus. I may not know my path too far, but you know when they um, talked about you are uh, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, it, it wasn't. Think about lamps and lights. They don't go way down like an air, airplane runway, do they? This is the way, this is the way. Nope, it's like, oh, right here, right here. I can see a few feet in front of me. That is walking in the light. Walking in the light is Ephesians 1, my, one of probably my favorite passages, uh, 117 and following. Open the eyes of my heart. Spirit of wisdom and revelation, open the eyes of my heart. Do you know what that means? It means the revelation is turning on the light of who God is, who Jesus is, who his spirit is. And the thing is, we do have Holy Spirit. And you, we can say, I can't see right now. Would you open my eyes? Unfortunately, what we normally do is we're setting our eyes on the, the earthly realm. And we say, I can't see that. You know why we can't see? Because we're not supposed to. We're to see him. And the scripture says, if we see him, he will light our way. He will light our way. He will light our way. If we walk step by step. You know, we sing Awesome God. It reminded me of Rich Mullins' step-by-step -step song, step-by-step. Step, I'll follow you step-by-step, step. not mile-by-mile, five-year plan-by-five-year plan, step-by-step. Step. Will you open my eyes to see who you are? And it all comes down to this. Do I trust you? Do I trust you when everything looks dark? But who is light? When my heart is breaking in the darkness of pain, but who is my light? The light of his love. This is a prayer I pray for people a lot. I pray that his light, love, and life will be upon you, will be in you, will flow through you. Light, love, and light. That's Jesus. That's his Holy Spirit. So stand up. Please, Lord, right now we repent any unbelief of when we follow the darkness, when we follow the path of the earth instead of the path of your light. You will use the path of the earth, Lord. We know that, but that is not your path. Your path is one of love and life. And your ways are higher than our ways. And your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And you said there will be trouble and tribulation, but fear not, for I am with you. 
So Lord, today we repent and we ask you to help us fix our eyes on you. Spirit of wisdom and revelation, open the eyes of our heart that we may set our face like flint upon you. And knowing that in all situations at all times, you are here because you have overcome the world through the cross and the power of your resurrection. So as we repent, we receive the bread of life, which is your spirit, your love, your life, your light, and the power of your resurrection. We take this humbly, honestly, and say, Lord, let your kingdom come in us. Let your will be done in us and through us for your glory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, just receive all that he has for you today. Shift. If you're in a place right now, if you're in a place where you've been wrestling, maybe finances, maybe health, maybe salvation of loved ones, maybe sickness, whatever, take a shift. Step into a shift, a relationship, a broken relationship, fear. Take a step. Can you take a step in the light, in faith, not knowing what's ahead? and say, yes, Lord, I believe, I believe. Forgive my unbelief. Right there, forgive my unbelief. Lord, use your church. Use your church to bring your light, your life, and your love to those around us. In your holy name we pray, amen. theme today is on faith and trusting the Lord. I uh, just turned into uh, the Bible in Chronicles, and I looked in Chronicles, and um, I was looking for something the Lord had shown me before, and uh, it's, it's in the last chapter of Chronicles, yeah, 29, last chapter in Chron First Chronicles. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David, his father, and he prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. I, uh, I just looked back here, and I said, Candy, look at this. They were getting ready for the, for the temple, and people made offerings for the temple and for the place to go worship God. And so uh, they had gold and sil gold of Ophir, 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay lay the walls of the buildings. They had, uh, hmm, everything just came. They had 100,000 talents of iron, um, 100,000 talents of, of silver. Uh, the, the scriptures just go on and on. And uh, the hand of the Lord was on them. And the Lord God, our, the Lord our God, all this abundance was provided to build you a house <clears throat> for your holy name and it is from your hand and all is yours so they had a <clears throat> Solomon was going to build the the temple and that's what was taking place and we're building the temple in many ways we're building the temple I got a word from young John this morning <clears throat> and it's from Matthew 5, 48, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And I didn't know if John uh, realized it, but that word for perfect is teleos, which means completion. I'm sure John has heard that before. And, uh, and then with that, you, you find uh, that in the beginning of Christ's ministry in the Sermon on the Mount, and lo, at the end of Christ's ministry, he's hanging on the cross, and he uses that word again, teleos, in a different way, Greek word for completion or perfection. And it's a different way as the last word on the cross was tetelestai, which means it is finished. 
It is completed. And then Paul uses it all through the scriptures, teleos, um, the one I like, Philippians 3, verses 15 through 19. I press on toward the prize. I press on to the goal. Not that I've already received it. I haven't received perfection, but I'm continuing to press on toward that. And, of course, if, if anyone thinks that we're supposed to be perfect as Christians, then Christ died for, for null and void. There's no need for Christ if you think you can be perfect. But if you think you can be complete in this moment with the blood of Jesus Christ, then step up to the plate. Everybody gets to play. Everybody is in the kingdom of God. And so we step up with the blood of Jesus Christ covering us with his righteousness, his breastplate of righteousness, his completion, and we're made whole and we're made complete. And so with that and with the idea of building the temple, and Nehemiah had said the people had a mind to build, and we're building over here, we just offer our checks, our tithes, our offerings completely to the Lord. Because all that he's given us, we complete that as we live that life fully and holy for him. Amen? Amen. So let's just pray and bless the offering. Lord, we thank you for this offering time. We thank you more than we can think or imagine. And even what I'm thinking about now. <laughs> and Father, we thank you for the completed act of Jesus Christ on the cross. And it's in the cross we glory. And we walk in the resurrection of life in order to have that light step by step. So, Lord, by grace, we've been saved through faith. And through faith, we walk this walk with you. And uh, we thank you, Lord, that we get a chance to give unto you. We do not take this lightly. Lord, we're not buying 100,000 talents of iron, but we bought $500 worth of sprinklers this week. We're we got three guys, four guys working over there. We got all these things going on, and we just have a mind to build. And we're going to have a mind to build a, a, a place. I know you're building this temple in our hearts as we trust you. But, Lord, we're coming to a place where we need a building. We need a pod. We need an envelope. We need a bottle for the oil to continue to flow. We need, we've got an empty bottle, Lord for you to flow, for the Holy Spirit to flow. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, with that, uh, Leslie, there's another switch right there. Can you just flip that on right there? Yeah. And whomever, if you can turn out these lights, yeah, thank you. I, uh, I just bless the Lord this morning and all that he's doing. Oh, Candy, yeah, you go for it, girl. I was ready to go. Uh, thanks. Heather, come on up. Um, so while you're giving, uh, Heather has a word to share this morning, and I think it goes along with everything that's been said so far. So this morning during worship, <clears throat> I was crying out to the Lord, asking him to remove anything, anything in my walk with him that could um, be like an obstacle that could prevent me from running as fast as possible, as well as possible. And um, I saw him smile, and he responded with this, and I saw this, um, this vision of me running on this, um, it's like an Olympic track, um, running track, I guess, and um, there were multiple obstacles in my way all throughout, like hurdles. I've never done that before in the physical, um, so, uh, but uh, the look on my face was, um, it was, it was pure joy, and every obstacle that I came across, it was, it, it was so easy and so light to just completely move over it and to continue running faster and faster, and the Lord said, and this isn't just for me, this is for the body, why I'm sharing this, so um, the Lord said that he is not going to remove every obstacle in our path. He's not. What he's going to do instead is he's going to strengthen us and uh, through the joy of the Lord, and he's going to give us the endurance that we need to not only run the race, but to be more than conquerors as we do it. 
Um, so as human beings, we would prefer for those things to just be moved out of our way. But there is a greater glory in store as we keep our eyes on Jesus and not the obstacles. And we continue to, um, to love him despite what continues to come in our past. So I hope that. Oh, and then, um, and then I heard um, uh, the scripture that came to me. It was very vague, but it was the one where it said um, to strip away anything that could slow us down. And I did a quick search, and that was Hebrews 12, 1 through 2, and it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. If we want the, re the rewards that come from running the race, the race well, we have to be willing to die. We have to be willing to say, Lord, I'm going to bless your name. I'm going to, I'm going to worship you no matter what comes in my path because you are bigger than this. So, Amen. That's truth. Yes, Sunita. Come on up. When I was in the throne place with this big steps, and today during the worship, um, I was at I was the same place, but I'm like this. And I said, um, "Father, can I come to you?" Because it's a lot of steps. And he said, "Come on in." And then I was walking in the steps, and he reminded me, "The veil is broken. There's an access of the glory, and we are the glory carrier." And it's God is not saying, hey, I'm here, you're here. Father's saying, come on up. And he tore the well, and it's, there's an access. And it's not, you know, sometimes we think, hey, we're not holy, as Pastor Dwight was saying. We're not perfect. But he's a father. And, and today, I went on up the steps to him. <laughs> it's not that hard if you just ask the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Because we're seated in heavenly places, and we're called to rule and reign on the earth from that place, you know. So uh, thank you, Sunita. And continue to pray for Benjamin and Jeremiah as they are in India um, doing well. And Sunita and Patty's helping Sunita on the Glory House Fellowship and Zoom calls. And so you're carrying on while... Benjamin's away, away is, aren't you? It's, yes. Yeah, and so they're working hard, and it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> So it takes a lot out of you. but So pray for them to have the strength and uh, for God to do all that he has planned to do. Um, announcements, hot off the press like five minutes ago. July 9th, we're going to have a potluck send off blessing goodbye for um, Sarah and Zach because uh, we were planning it anyway and then they went into a season of fasting and praying, and they are really called to this faith move, and they are moving in just um, about three weeks or less. <laughs> so everything's not in place. Everything's not in place because they felt called to obey out of faith, not obey out of what they could do. So... It's really crazy. Please pray for them, you know. Um, but we're going to, everybody bring dishes. We'll put out, put this out in the email and um, so forth. Uh, keep reminding you. But also we want to bless them financially. And if you'll just bring a love offering to give to them. as um, I can't believe they, you know, Zach's been our worship leader for a, a long while. <laughs> quite a few years and um they're leaving they're really leaving <laughs> and taking our grandbabies away <laughs> john did you have something to say a real short one yeah yeah
Um, this morning I w- went for a walk when God gave me the scripture for Dwight. Um, and the last few days I keep hearing foxes or birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. And I was thinking this morning, I was like, well, foxes have holes because they can dig them and birds have nests because they build them. The son of man has no place to lay his head. Well, Jesus was a carpenter, so he could have built a house, but he didn't. Later, he says, I go and prepare a place for you. So he withheld not only his divinity, but his ability to build a house to go and prepare a place for us. Uh, but I was just reflecting. on, And you were talking about Abraham earlier. Um, and I, God was saying to me this morning, Abraham's not the only one I've called. You know, all throughout history, God's been calling. And uh, so that I just want to bless them, even though they're not in this room, but uh, with their testimony of, of going without a home, even though they have the means to provide a home, they're just, it's a testimony to us all. Yeah, it is. Thank you, John. <laughs> so they're actually going without their house being sold because they, they believe that waiting for their house to sell is their path, not a faith path. So... Um, and, th- you know, they won't be homeless there, but they won't have their own home until their house sells and they can purchase something. But God's ways are higher. His plans are good. And we're going to send them off, joining them in faith and joy, just like Abraham went forth. We believe. We believe in what God is doing in them. So, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, advancing in the prophetic is coming up, I think, uh yeah, Ken Fish and Chris Reed. And the goal, it has to happen, guys. We will be in the big room. So we're going to keep telling you, when it, when the call goes out, it's all hands on deck. We'll all be cleaning or painting or whatever is needed, you know, to ma- get, our, get the house of God ready for this conference. Because Chris Reed is well known. Ken Fish is well known. Chris Reed is with Morningstar, and he is, uh, I've seen him, he's very prophetic. I saw him before he was big, and he was, his prophecies are just right right on target, um, and the anointing upon him, and he's just a really kind person, because uh, when he was ministering where I was, it was on physical healing, and I, I experienced the kindness of the Lord through him. So um, you want to go ahead and get ready. We are registering because Ken needs that. Um, And so it's free. But just go online and register. All right. Be planning that. Uh, I guess school will be back in session or right around there. So (laughs) here we go. Right. Okay. Tuesday's worship and prayer. Isaiah Bible study. Pat, where are you? Yeah. Still going, and can people join still? Yeah. So if you want to be a part of that, Glory House is ongoing. Women's Breakfast is next uh, Saturday. Yep. Um, 10 o'clock. 10 a.m.? 10 (laughs) a.m. And we are still working on the Global School of Supernatural Ministry. If you're interested in that, please see Don. But we hope to get details in line. We've, um, we're really trying to get all the details together. <laughs> so uh, there's lots to enjoy around here. And for a lot of you, show up on Tuesday. It's really cool. Yes, Kathy. It's at Kathy's house. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Oh, okay. All right. Now it's Dr. D's time. <laughs> Microphone. I'll see. Guys, we're just going to look at a place in uh, Acts chapter 13 this morning that I, I love to go back to when I think about uh, faith. Um, I've looked at faith. I. I guess a good way to start was I showed some doors over here to a person yesterday. You might see me on Facebook. I'm selling everything and the kitchen sink, literally. Uh, Bathroom sink, anyway. 
and uh, we're we're just selling out. We're we're going to finish next door. Uh, it's just whatever it takes. The Lord will provide, and really ask the Lord how you might be involved in that. We need. I'm just going to go ahead and push it forward for even a sound system over there, and that's another chunk, chunk, big chunk of money. And uh, we're just going to pray into that and see what the Lord does and says. But uh, I love Acts 13. I've looked at it before, and I had a professor one time. He said sometimes you can go back to a scripture that's just been uh, picked threadbare and find new, uh, new messages and new new outpouring, and I just pray that, that that be the case this morning. But I look at uh, Acts 13, I look at the people of faith, and I think it's very apropos when I'm talking to people like uh, Zach and Sarah who are very close to us. I don't know if you noticed that, but the, our grandchildren are close to us, and uh, we just love them dearly, and we were sitting around Father's Day, and it all hit us that, I mean, the Lord just came in, and we kind of pray as we go, and, uh, and you know, it just the realization of them needing to start packing last week was there, and so they were uh, snotting tears, and uh, Sarah came over and hugged me, and, and I mean, I was the only one crying in the living room, and uh so anyway, I was thinking about tears this past week and where do tears come from. And for me, tears, tears wasn't a natural thing. Uh, tears was not a, uh, a natural. I don't think I cried till about 25 years ago when the Lord touched me and touched my heart. But a lot of times tears come about in a romantic situation where there's heart and emotions involved and the Lord is touching me. And, and he's touching me with revelation. And when he touches, I realize that he, he has been a God of trust and faith. Uh, you know, there's, there's that thing that we have faith. And, yeah, I can. Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not yet seen. But when you do that in faith, there's things that take place after a while where there's just trust. And like now, I don't produce these things, you know. But there's a trust factor that I know I can trust my daddy. And when anybody starts cussing God, and we've had that in our face, you, Jesus, and, um, and we've had that, you know, in a, in a lot of different ways. But, you know, they, they don't know Jesus like I do, and I, I wish they did. And so many people give up at the wrong time when there's a time of um, inflection, an inflection point. That's a word that is thrown out there in the last year or two. But there's an epoch moment, if you will. But something takes place where it just shakes your inner core, and you don't think God's going to show up as people that were here Loose, I'm looking at you. But people, I won't mention any names, but there are people that were here Tuesday night. You know, God, and we've all been there. And we'll, you know, we, what, what happens when God doesn't show up the way you think he's going to show up or at the right time? Uh, usually when I'm waiting on a big chunk of money to come in, maybe way back when, when I was selling a house or whatever, it's like I need the money, I need the money. If I don't, then it's going to cost me. Well, it always comes four or five days late. Has anybody ever had that? You know, you, you're waiting on the money, and uh, the, the visas, bills are due, and whatever. You're just going to pay off the bills with that. But uh, I, I just uh, was selling some doors yesterday, and this guy came in, and he said, I can understand how this do. I'll do a little reverse engineering. And we learned that from the Japanese. They, and, and the Chinese, they stole our material and reverse engineered it. They, they took it apart in order to put it back together again. And, you know, anything, anything, anything can be taken apart. I've, I've changed some things out in my computer a couple of times because if I can take it apart, I know I can put it back together. <laughs> of course, I'm over 49 now. Uh, where did that screw? I did have one screw left over. Just a itty bitty screw. But uh, it could have fallen on my head for all I know. But it's, it's just reversed engineering. I think, well, if truth is truth, then it can be applied in other situations. So I'll go back to the Bible. 
And I look at the faith of Abraham. He's one of the faith people uh, in, the, in the scriptures. And I go, you know, how, how did he get to where he got to? And he went through all kinds of tribulations, didn't he? He went through all kinds of stuff. He, you know, you, you're going to be, you're going you're gonna to look up in the sky, the stars. You're going to have that many sons and daughters. Well, I got a wife that just won't have babies. How's that going to happen, you know? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It, it, and I, I don't know if your crisis is bigger than that one. Maybe your crisis is bigger than Abraham. Or, or Moses being sent on the backside of a desert for 40 years, and he comes back, and all of a sudden God is speaking to him through a burning bush. Uh, I don't know if you've been on the backside of a desert for 40 years. Maybe your crisis is bigger than that. But Moses, he, he learned to trust God. Uh, I, you know, Joseph, you look at the life of Joseph, and you just kind of do some reverse engineering. How can this people, how can these people have faith? You, rat, rat, ratu, you know what I'm talking about. Rever <laughs> Philip, you know what I'm talking about, reverse engineering. Well, between you two, you're the bookends and just transfer that to everybody else, you know. You take it apart in order to put it back together again. And I'm, I'm, I know that is a gift of mine. I can take that apart. I can take, the, I can take anything apart and fix it and put it back together. <laughs> so I do that to the scriptures, you understand? I go backwards in order to, to go forwards. I look at the things that, that happened in the past so that I can, I can look forward. And so, I, I, you know, I look at the life of Joseph. All right. Hey, Ezra. <laughs> hey, but can we have a bite? Ooh, Mimi's bread? Is that Mimi's bread? We'll stop for my grandchildren. I got a bumper sticker. I stop for grandchildren. Uh, so, anyway, uh, you look at the life of Joseph, and you just kind of, you know, what... What can happen? Here's a guy that was set on fire. He had a dream from God. He knew what was going to take place. And he finds himself in a jail for 13 years uh, over something that he didn't do. Maybe your crisis is bigger than that. I don't know. Have you been in jail for 13 years over something? Of course, everybody, if you've been to jail, you didn't do it, right? <laughs> Nobody. I, it wasn't me. And uh, anyway, I'm not judging that. But I, I, I just look at the life of Joseph and look at, you know, what happened to Paul. I mean, really, really, guys. Struck blind on the, on the, on the road to Damascus and uh, went through the school of the Holy Spirit, you know, in the desert. And then, then the Lord healed him. I mean, I mean this guy, if, if there's anybody that was set aside for God's use, it was Paul, wasn't it? And yet, name, name some of the things that he went through. That, yeah, stone to death, left dead. Plus, ever just being with people, I think he adds that. What loose, bitten by a snake. So it's it just goes on and on. And I, and I don't know. Your crisis may be di may be worse than that. You know, I I don't know what you're going through. Your crisis may be worse than that. But out of all these, I find a life of faith. And they are in the chapter of faith, Hebrews chapter 11. For these people, they, they, they had faith in God. And, you, you know, I, I was praying last night, and there's a girl that used to come here, and somebody prophesied over her that she was going to do this, this, and this, and it didn't happen. She fell out, and she was gone. And I, see, I just see so many people with no foundation, you know, that these things are supposed to take place. And when it doesn't happen, they just go. They just go. And, and, and let me assure to you tonight. It, we ain't over yet. <laughs> let, me, let me assure to you today that uh, I'm a man of faith. And I know I've, I've done the reverse engineering. I can take that apart. I, can take, I take people apart and try to figure out why they tick the way they do. And I've, I've got notes up here on just about everybody in here. I, I, it's not judgment. I don't look at it wrongly. I don't. And, and, and even I was praying for Susan this morning. I think there's hope for her. And, uh, and uh, when I start, you yeah, know, it's, it's a joke. I, I love you. I'm, that's me saying, I'm sorry too, Susan. I, I love you. So um, I like your glass. 
<laughs> Where was I? But, uh, you know, you just do revert. And I, I want to speak that even to the teenagers that, that are in this room and, and within my voice, that I know that I know that I know that there's a God. And there's a God that loves you, and there's a Jesus that loves you. And if there's anything I can do, I can just say, I'm warning you at the bridge. The bridge is out. If you go down that path, if you go down that road, you're going to just fall into all kinds of divers' temptations and, and just dive into a bridge. And it's, it's just hell on earth. And, 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 and it will not, it will not, you will not reap anything from this earth. You'll only reap the goodness of the Lord by following him in that light. Is that, is that, is that? Does so I have an amen there, you know? I, so I'm not saying, look at me, look at me. I'm just saying, I know. I've been around. I was praying. I was listening to Will Reagan last night. Uh, I've just come to praise the Lord. What's the name of the song? I played it over and over. Alexa. Uh, but she played it well. And uh, by Will Reagan. And uh, we have come to worship you. And I played it over and over. And the Lord told me, John Heyman. And I went, uh, well, that's my grandfather's name. And I thought he was telling me some things. That my, my granddaddy had a great faith. When I would go and see him, he would tell stories about a cat and a cow and a dog and everything else. But he would he'd always have his Bible right there. And I always knew that my granddaddy grew old while reading the Bible. And I also knew something about my granddaddy, that he was a warrior of faith. He, he, he just believed in faith, and he would say things like this, and don't take it the wrong way, but take it the right way, if you will. He would say things like, uh, if you don't have enough faith to go to church, you don't have enough faith to go to heaven. And I go, well, am I supposed to say that? So I, I didn't know if I was supposed to say that or not. But it does, fa it does take faith to go to church. And you are people of great faith because you know if you can get there through all the trials and tribulations of getting to church on Sunday morning. It's crazy, isn't it? You can get there if you can just, if you can just hang on to the horns of the altar. If I can just hang on to the cords of his, of his shawl or, or, or his apron. If I can just grab hold of, of something, I know that I can make it through the week. Any of you, anybody has been there this morning or this week, if I can just make it. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but if I can just make it. And I think that was my granddaddy's intent. But really, I, I've shared this story before, and maybe, it, maybe it's just for me, but about eight or nine hours before he passed away, he was in a semi-comatose state laying on a, on a, on a, on a uh, couch. And he raised up and he told me to preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. And he laid back down and died in about nine hours later. And I just thought that was pretty cool. Not that he died, but so there's been something inside of me ever since, uh, being in prison or shipwreck or whatever the situation. I, I, I did go to prison for three hours, but that's another story. But I just think if we reverse engineering, if we do reverse a little something here that we can find in Acts chapter 13, and I, I just want to breeze right along to, till we get to where we, we really are. And I, I, I see in Acts chapter 13, and just previous to that, we find the death of Herod, and that is the Herod that put Jesus to the test and sent him to the cross. And Herod also put, he's always involved in making sure Christians were put down. And, and Herod was the king when Peter was arrested, but later arrested and put into prison. And then the angels let Peter out of prison. But, uh, and, and, you know, Rhoda came to the door, if you remember that story, Rhoda came to the door and thought it was his angel, that it wasn't Peter, it, it, or people thought that it was his angel, you know, it, it really isn't Peter, and, and I, I think that we need to embellish the fact that there are angels out there, and they are there to help you. The Father is a Father of love. Jesus Christ saved us, and he's always with us and through us, and is bringing salvation and wholeness and healing. There's healing in his blood. And then the Holy Spirit is there to, 
to join with the covenant. And the Holy Spirit is the culmination of the Father and Jesus. He is in us, and he is there. And we want to give praise and glory to all that and not get strung out on angels. But I, I, as, as I put my C, my C, my C cat cord into his computer, what is it? The latest, greatest C, C, C cord. Not US, USB-C. There you go. Uh, anyway, when I do that, it's, it's almost like he releases his angels to help us out. And the, the pace of God sending his angels to me in the middle of the night is stepping up. <laughs> uh, did I holler last night, honey? I didn't holler Tuesday night. I, I told you Tuesday night, but I didn't scream then. And I just, I'm getting more and more angelic activity. I don't, uh, am I any better than, no. Am I perfect? No, I'm not, not perfect. But there's something God's doing. And it may be this, that, and I may, I, you know, it's going to be this right here. But I believe something is doing. And it was like a wind that came in. I never saw a face last night. It was a wind that came up. I screamed, and then the wind flew, <laughs> you know, the wind blew out. And it was a, it was a, a beautiful angelic being that came in. And, uh, and so I, I just think God is continuing to do things. I, I, I haven't been privy to a lot of things that are happening in America, and I'm just going to take a rabbit trail here at this time for a clip. And uh, we're just thankful for the people who are watching today. And I just, I had a dream a couple of nights ago. Oh, it was Tuesday night after two angels showed up. And um, I had a dream and uh, excuse me, the dream was Friday night. But anyway, um, I had a dream that, that really ticked Rick, Rick Rocks and TikTok. But uh, it, I had a dream that there was a white storm. I, I was looking at radar. I was looking at it radar, and there was a white ice storm coming out of California and coming into where we were. And it looked like we were in the southwest, but there was a white storm on, white on, uh, on radar that I was looking on the Weather Channel. And it was coming, and uh, I uh, we were inside a house, and even though it was warmer than I really thought, it, it there's no way it could snow or ice. But I knew that storm had all the capability. It was a it was a, a, a low pressure system with all, a winter low pressure system that had all the capability of ice, snow, and cold weather in order to, to support the ice and the snow that it was going to give. And it was a big, if California was this big, it was this big. It was coming down right toward us. And I said, we need to get prepared. So I got in the house, and all of a sudden I looked outside, outside the windows, and I saw the snow and the ice coming, and I knew we were protected. And I, I pulled the curtains, too, in case the wind blew the, the windows out, and we were safe. And I'm just saying I believe that we haven't seen anything yet, and uh, the things that are coming out of California, the progressive element of California, the woke mentality that's coming out, and it's going to be a storm. But God is going to protect us. Just get in your house of protection. You can see it coming. Open the windows. Look and see. And then just close it. You don't have to listen to all the media. You don't have to li I, I, I can't. I cannot listen to everything. And so I close it. I close the windows, and I know we're protected. And I say that because I ran it by Candy, and I said, what is that about? And she said, it may be something bigger than the church, you know, that God is speaking. So I believe that God is speaking, and I believe also that God is saying, as I read something yesterday, that as we look at the woke and how suddenly it came upon us, and we couldn't believe that it would happen that strongly, and so much in our culture and society, it just came alive uh, nuclear power is going to be that way too. All of a sudden, we're, we're calm and we're at peace, and there's no way nobody's going to push that button. But it is, it, it, it is happening, and it is going, and I believe the nuclear energy is going to happen there. It, there's no need to fret. There's no need to be upset. All we got to do is just hunker down, and we're going to come together. And, and God, is, God loves the church, by the way, and, and we're going to need each other. We're going to need each other as we live through perilous times. It's not to get down. I'm not prophesying gloom and doom, 
but those elements are, are happening. And if we don't get a president that is ugly and mean and, and uh, obtuse, uh, China's going to, between China, Iran, and Russia, well, anyway. But I want to talk about faith this morning. And, uh, and I, I think that's a part of it. And if we look at, if we look at, at, at the uh, Acts chapter 12, we'll see uh, people of faith. Peter's just a fisherman. They're just ordinary people. And I, 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 and I can just say God always plucks out just ordinary people and do some extraordinary things. He, he just does it. I mean, over and over again. And I just say, why not me? Why not you? Why not now? Why don't we do this? Why don't we pray? We're, no, we'll go back home and, and we do things by default, but I'm just crying out. Think the way you think. Think about the way you think. Think about your, your, what your, your daily lives and change something. If something needs to be changed, it needs to be changed. If you're just banging your head up against a wall, there's nothing that's going to change in that. That made me dizzy. Uh, <laughs> but if you do the same old thing the same old way, it ain't gonna happen. So, so I, I I just cry out and look at look at the life of of Peter and Paul and Mary. <laughs> I got you, but anyway, um, but in uh, I couldn't think of a Peter, Paul, and Mary song. Somebody'll start singing. The answer is blowing in the wind. <laughs> Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my heavenly father. So <clears throat> real quickly, yeah, we got a, we got a, somebody keeps adding numbers to that, adding time. That's a fast clock these days. You know, anything of faith, there's got to be just a birthing stage, isn't there? You know, you've been, it, it's usually through a prophetic word. One way or another, these people don't know it or those people don't know it, but God told them to do that. And usually is when I was in the Christian church, God would always speak to people and pastors when it was a time to move or do something big. Well, I just feel like something happened. And that, even though they didn't readily, you know, prophesy in the church, God would always move a pastor. And, and, and my move from Illinois to uh, Conyers, Georgia in 1984 was something like this. God, if you ever get me out of this cold weather, I'll never complain about cold weather, hot, we hot weather again. And he did, and I did. And so I've never, you know, it can be 100 degrees outside, and I go, praise God. <laughs> you know, it's not 20 below. And, uh, but but it, it happened something like that, and we moved to Conyers, Georgia, and I met Sue at that point, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a birthing stage that takes place, a nesting stage. And I just look around my home, and God's, Speaking about nesting, I got two birds' nests in my in my home or outside my home now. Maybe in my home, I don't know. There may be bats in my belfry. I don't know, but uh, there are um, there are these nesting. The it's when the egg drops into the nest, an idea is born. God begins to move in the lives of His people. And you look in verses one through three that Barnabas. Simeon, who was called Niger, uh, Lucius of Cyrene, Manium, and who had brought up from the Herod the Tetrarch, Tetrarch, Tetrarch and Saul. So you've got five people there, and what's usual and customary is the first and the last are the important things here in the writings of Luke. So you've got Barnabas is the first one, and Saul is the second one. And mind you, if we miss it here somewhere around uh, verse 9, Saul becomes Paul at this point. Saul was his Hebrew name, but when he was sent out to the Gentiles, he became Paul. He, he, uh, he attracted and he took on a more Latin name, a more Roman name than Saul. But in chapter 13, you got, you got part of Barnabas and Saul. And while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. See, Paul had never gone on a missionary journey yet. We look at the three missionary journeys, three and a half, if you will. And uh, we, look at, uh, we look at Paul, and, and here's really where it's all beginning. So I, I just look at, at faith here, and again, I do some reverse engineering and try to figure out, you know, in this situation and in every situation, there's a prophetic word. Abraham got it. 
Joseph got it. Paul gets it. Jesus knew he was about. He only did what his father was doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There was a, there was a, there's a prophetic word. There's a strong word. Uh, it was a prophetic word by John Paul Jackson. We're just ordinary people. We hadn't been in the vineyard very long, but the Lord just loves to do. Did I say that yet? He loves to do extraordinary things with ordinary people. And we're just ordinary people down in West Point, Georgia, who'd been kicked out of the Christian church and didn't know which way to go. So we were there at a John Paul Jackson uh, place, and we had already planted a vineyard. So a year later, John Paul Jackson stood us up along with Johnny and, and uh, Elizabeth Enlow uh, that night. And he said, I see you coming out of the church planting churches. And so with that prophetic word, Johnny Chris, who is the pastor then of the Atlanta Vineyard, uh, he set us aside and said, well, you know, what you said, you're thinking about coming back to Conyers. Maybe we need to do it. Anyway, we left West Point and came to Conyers, Georgia because of that prophetic word. And Johnny was ready to release us from West Point and bring us to the Atlanta area. And, and, and so uh, during that time, I just remember being on the floor. The, the power of God would come, it, whether it was a guy from Denver, whether it was a guy from Wes uh, Campbell from uh, Canada, whether it was John Paul Jackson, whether Randy Clark came during those days, just one right after another, we would have renewal meetings. And I would find myself in a woman birthing like position, and I do preface that by a woman, who is who who ha who has their knees up and I'm doing this and groaning and 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 kind of hurting down here as if I'm birthing something. And I've been birthing something for twenty years. I've been birthing something and Lord God has done just extraordinary things. But I'm just gonna quote something out of old brother where art thou? My daddy said, if you ain't got land, you ain't nothing. <clears throat> There's something about building the temple. There's something about having land. There's something about having territory. As we pray and we continue to pray and worship at our church, we have at our house, we have angels that show up. It's a place of worship. It wasn't that way five years ago. It wasn't that way four years ago. This house, can you not, you intercessors, can you not feel the difference in this building as it were a year ago? It's extraordinary. It's extraordinarily different. I don't know if God shows up and he's in the paint. He's saturated in the lights. I don't know how the glory of God works, but I know when he comes. I know when I feel him. It's not just a feeling. It's not just goosebumps. It's beyond that. It's like I feel it every Saturday night. It's not a feeling. It's just a presence. It's just a, wow. It's a shift. And, you know, you just expect great things to happen on Sunday. <laughs> There's a nesting phase. So the pastor here and the newest associate step up and they go into a place where it's a metropolitan area, it's multi-raced, it's multi-cultured, and there's a nesting phase. And lo and behold, time ticks away. I think anything of faith, there just has to be a nesting phase. Well, I, I just, I just got to do a mission trip. I think I'm going to go to Cuba. I'm going to go to Haiti. Well, good luck with going to Haiti. I have my, my friends who are from Haiti uh, will not go to Haiti. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to go to India. Oh, I want to go to Iran. I think that'd be cool to preach the gospel in Iran. You better not. If God didn't tell you to do that, you better not. I'm going to go to Turkey and Tear down the principalities because I'm an intercessor. You. You can't do that. There, there has to be a nesting phase. There has to be a, a thing that you've heard over and over that God has told you to do this. And the bigger it is, whew, 
the more the reward. So think big, pray big. It's not about your fear. It's not about your phobias. It's not about our hesitations. It's not about personality. It's not about your social. But let's just do something stupid. You know, I, I was telling how I'm putting all my chips in the middle of the table and, you know, I'm not going to do anything with stocks. And I go, you know, people do this all the time with their houses. They put a call. Uh, Jim, is this right? They put a call, an option call with 20% down payment. They're going to put a call in the stock of their house expecting to get a return later. Everything's a gamble. Won't you gamble with the Lord? I mean, I mean, really, sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping. If I'm standing here today, just look in my eyes. There's no, there's, there's no guile. There's no gal on this at all. Not gal, but guile. There's no guile on this at all. And that is, it's, it's all about sowing and reaping. And I'm just, rewards, like I said last Sunday. So anything of faith, there's a nesting phase, there's a testing phase. This is where you test things. You have an hypothesis, you know. Well, if I go to South America, then these things must take place. So it's a testing, and you can test anything. You can, many of us just blab, well, I believe, blah, 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 but have you tested it? Well, I, no, I, I just, I've, I've got an idea, and then I, my idea, I just think everybody's saved, and my, but have you tested that? Well, I, I, I just don't know if we're supposed to do prophecy like that, but have you tested it in the long, on the long run? Well, I believe I'm supposed to go to, Brazil in November. Well, there's a testing that takes place. And uh, this is good. The phone went off. What's the cost? What's the requirement? What's the effect? So there's a testing that takes place. And I'm just saying anything of faith. This is where the plan is crystallized, verse 4 and 8. They get their stuff together. They collect a team. They get a target called Cyprus. And they move on to the investing stage. This is where you pull the trigger. This is where you say yes in a marriage. This is where I know that this is where God is planting me and I'm coming. This is, the, this is the point where I say I'm pushing all my chips to the middle of the table. This is where either I'm going to be a Christian or not. And I choose to be a Christian. I'm going to live the Christian life. And I know I'm going to blow it at times. And, and, and even though God told me this, God told me one, two, three, and it didn't happen. <laughs> well, honey, that's okay. It's all right. God does that all the time because it's better than you can think or imagine. It's, it's amazingly better than anything you can think or imagine. So this is, this is where you invest. This is in marriage, I will do. This is in weddings when you walk out down the aisle. We're going to have an aisle, a center aisle to do weddings. This is where you sign a contract for a house. This is where you call a counselor and make an appointment. This is where where we stop talking all about it. Talk, 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 talk. Let's come together and talk, 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 No, this, shut up and do something. I wanted to, did I say that? Kenny, I can't say that. There's a 39 piece of copper pipe in the, I'm trying to sell it for $100. Who give me 190 and get 80? But I want to, I wanted to bring it in here and lay it right here. Afterwards, if you want to walk out back and see my one-inch copper pipe, you can. To you, yes, I'll make a great deal on it. But uh, it's a conduit. And the Lord showed me that for a group of people here that they're conduits. And uh, <clears throat> it's a one-inch piece. It's a supply line, and the water just flows through it. And the Lord gave me that because I realized, even though it's been prophesied over, Dwight, you're a conduit. Dwight, you know, you heard that over and over. Susan, you're a conduit. You're a conduit. But I, I really got further revelation on that like Thursday or Friday that really I don't have anything <laughs> that I'm really just a conduit. And I showed Candy some things and I pulled out some money out of my own billfold and did some things and paid some things. And, and I said, it's not my money anyway. You know, it's, it was mine, I think, 
we sold something, you know, the, the, kitchen, the kitchen sink, like I was telling you about. And it's, it's not my money anyway. I'm just a conduit. So what did you say, Brett? You conduit. <laughs> Isn't that what you said yesterday? You can do it. You can do it. In, instead of just talking about it, you can do it. You know, and, and so if I, I didn't mean to say shut up or anything, but what I meant, <clears throat> what I meant to say, you just invest, you just jump in there. You jump, does that make sense? You just jump in a pool, you know, you just, uh, <clears throat> so now Charlie, it's not you, but your wife. Okay. All right. <clears throat> See, it's, <clears throat> it's the difference of being. It's the difference of being someone who buys a ticket and sits in the stand and a player on the field. I mean, I had to play. I wasn't good at football, but watch this move, you know. <laughs> basketball was my, my, my thing, and uh, I, love, I love basketball, and I love to be in the court. And there's accolades, and there's egos, and there's all kinds of things that take place there, but... I, I love to be a player. I want to be a player. I just don't want to be on the sideline. Well, Dwight, that's good for you, and I, and I get it. But many of us are conduits in a lot of different ways. The kingdom of God is in my job. I'm not saying quit your job and doing this or that, but we're we're living conduits of God's glory and grace. We're just we're we're just seeing things. So so if you're a conduit, you're in the kingdom of God. You're you're a player. And we want to be players, and we all are players. And I'm not, yeah, saying anything else. But, but uh, Dwight Moody says, if God is going to be a partner, make your plans large. And, and, so, and so when I do reverse engineering, and I look at this, if this is faith, if this is real faith, and it applies in the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is everywhere, then... I would just say, Scott, this applies to your business, or Jim, this applies to where you're working, or Gail, wherever you are, or Andrea, just, just whatever, what are you doing that, that applies, that if I can hear God on it, there's that nesting phase, and then I can see, you know, the testing. What, what will it cost? What, what is it going to take place? Maybe a business plan, Chris, and just looking at it and, and from all those perspectives, uh, and investing, and then, and then even... Uh, to the point where I want to, I want to sow seed for the Lord, and I want to see God work in tremendous ways. And so here, Saul and Barnab Barnabas and Saul, they pulled the trigger. They left for Cyprus with the blessing of the church, and they were praying for him, praying and fasting. And this is where, in the fourth stage, we just want to hang out for a minute, and that's the arresting stage. And uh, let me just say a couple of things about this. That This is where everything looks like it's just going to fly apart. It's where the wheels, you know, it, it was a great thing to bring the ark of the Lord to the, to the, to the temple. And then the, the wheels of the wagon fall off. I mean, the wheel, you know, it fall off and Uzzah tries to catch the ark and it kills him. I mean, what kind of catastrophe is that? This is supposed to be a good thing. You know, it's, it's when you move into a new building and things just kind of fly apart. It, it seems to go out, this, out the window. When things screech to a halt, when things cave in, there's difficulties, unforeseen circumstances, questions you never thought of, problems you never anticipated or did anticipate. But never, Is this making sense to you? I mean, you, you do anything for the Lord and you think God is on it, then all these things happen, and all these, these terrible things take place. And you go, and, and, wait a minute, it ain't supposed to be that. It's supposed to be smooth and easy. No, 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 no. The bigger the thing that God has called you to, the more difficult is going to take place there. Well, that, that's just the enemy, and it, it probably is the enemy. But you see, through this, there's, there's, Instead of trying to point the blame and figure out who's in charge and all that kind of stuff, you learn how to try to fix problems. And I realize it. There's, there's situations, there's questions that come up. Don gets here early and he, he approaches me with a, a list of problems. <laughs> there's just things that needed to be taken care of. I'm not saying that against God. I'm just saying 
before church, you think you have problems. You ought to be here. <laughs> and there's just all kinds of situations that need to take place. And, and that's not, big, that's no big, that's not big, a big deal at all. I mean, that's nothing. But it's, it's when you go on a mission trip and Candy find out she doesn't have money to, to buy groceries. You see, you see, you'll never become a George Mueller and, and impact in hundreds of children to come to a place where there's no food in the pantry and you have to thank God anyway for the food to come and someone will knock on the door and bring you food. You'll never become a Paul until you expect to have shipwrecks and being bit by a snake and floggings and stonings and all kinds of... You'll never be a Joseph that leads a people out of bondage until you realize you're in prison. You're going to go through prison. You'll never be an Abraham. The Lord showed me that. Stars in the... There's going to be stars. There's shining stars. We're, I'm going to be an Abraham because I've suffered too much. I know the Lord's called me to be an Abraham. And there's, there's many sons and daughters here, but there's going to be more, amen? amen? Not mine, but ours. We're going to collectively see that. This is the structure of the church. When a hundred new people go through that door, you people right here will rise. The, I mean, the, the cream will rise to the top. You will be ready to minister and disciple. Do you get that? Yeah. That's why God has called you. When there's a hundred people, the structure will be there. I see it as plain as day. It's like, Jim's and John, Angela. The structure is there. And so I see the, the great things of God. And, and, and when you see this, you've you got to understand you can't quit. You cannot quit. I plan to run again. I've, I've run. I've got stories. But I sprained my ankle. And then I hurt this, and I hurt, my leg hurt the other night. But I plan to run again because in 2005 to 2012, I, I stumbled and fell, and I had aches and pains all the way from 2005 to 2012, and I had to stop running over and over. But by 2012, I ran the Peachtree Road Race. 2013, I ran the Poach... Po wait a minute. 2014... <laughs> I ran the Peachtree Road Race. This shirt is so old you can't hardly tell, but <laughs> what, what year is that? I can't tell. I think this is 2012. I've been there, and they gave me a T-shirt. And, and so I know endurance. I know that we've been knocked down, we, we, and you've been knocked down. But for God's sake and for the kingdom of God, don't quit. And, and, and I just want to encourage you that anything big like going to Montana is a place where there's just going to be play, things that just fly apart that do not work out. You want a, teat, a neat and tidy story, don't you? You've heard the stories how, and I've, ha I've got the stories too, how, how God just worked all this out just perfectly. And here I am in Montana, or here I am in Winder, Georgia, or Brazil, or wherever. God just worked out everything in here. You love those stories, don't you? Well, they're not going to be used to too much. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, God works in a lot of different ways. But I'm just finding, but I'm just saying, if you feel like your ministry has been shipwrecked, praise God. God's going to use that powerfully. He really is. And that's what we find in Acts chapter 13, because truth is parallel. Great companies are built on faith. Great businesses are built on faith. Great families are built on faith. Great churches are built on faith. Great missions are built on faith. And this is what faith is. This is what it's, this is the substance of things hoped for and the assurance of things that there's no light. There's, there's, there's no, that kitchen is just as dark as a cave. I don't know what's in there, but when I get there, it'll open up. When we get there, it'll open up. When we continue to go after bottles, the oil will continue to flow. Come the teacher, come the pupil. Come the envelope, come the pocket, come the people. 
is this making sense? I'm, I'm alluding to a number of things for, you know, 2 Kings 4. But, uh, but I'm, I'm just saying that there's some great things that took place. What happened to Paul and, and, and Barnabas here in verses 6a and following? They, uh, they land in Salamis, and uh, it's a northeast island of Paphros, and they begin preaching, and there's not a single convert. <laughs> you know, this is your first missionary journey, and nothing happens. First time we went to Sierra Leone, there was just, I mean, we preached in, you know, little schools and all kinds of things, but we, that, as I recall, and I've shared before, we preached in a, in a, um, a preaching point, and the, and I had to bend down right here in order to literally not skin my head, and blood was coming down, and, and I had to, to do this preaching point, uh, our first time in Sierra Leone, I had a team of six with me, uh, well, five, five kids, and that was the one we had nine flat tires on. And not only nine flat tires, but we got stuck on a bridge. But out of the nine flat tires, I, it, something crazy happened in North Sierra Leone where white, white seeds just came out of the cottonwood trees and just started I mean they covered the ground I was talking about the glory of the Lord and it just covered the ground and so it was a great object lesson for me to teach and preach on and uh, a youth minister came to the Lord right there at that particular place a youth minister came and he was a youth minister by the government and he was in charge of the youth who, who's up to age 22 to 24, and many people came to Christ, and we baptized people in streams. We baptized them in the ocean. We baptized them here and there, and it was just a beautiful thing. But when we first came over there, we had nine flat tires. Dan was counting them, and uh, then we got stuck on the bridge, but the beauty of it is these workers showed up that were working on the bridge, and in Sierra Leone, everything's community. Everybody flows as a community. There's no individuality. Everybody is connected to the family, to the people. And so we had 15 workers that actually put logs up under the van to raise it up, to pivot it, in order for the van to get out of this hole. And I just remember they were working on it, and I went over there and did this right here, and the van <laughs> lifted up. I don't I, I, Call it Samson. It was a Samson moment. And everybody went, ooh, ooh, oh, oh. But I lifted up the log and the van got out. You know, trial and tribulation over and over. But God blessed that again and again. And here is not a single convert, you know. Wouldn't this make you feel pretty down, you know? Paul, you're supposed to be this big guy. And through suffering, you shall go to the Gentiles, as, one, as what God told Paul. Through suffering, you're going to the Gentiles, and, and we have a situation here where there's no converts. The only one listening was an occultist, you, verses 6 through 8, and he tried to neutralize everything that they were saying, Bar-Jesus and fi Elymas. And finally, in verse 9, uh, they struck him blind. John quits. Uh, John Mark quits. There'll be people who quit. <clears throat> There'll be people who will say to your face one week, they'll say, I'm with you, Dwight. It doesn't matter what happens. I'm with you through thick and thin. And the next week they quit. John Mark quit. Don't know why he quit. Paul gets sick because we find this in Galatians 4, some things that take place. Maybe Paul got malaria and John said, I didn't sign up for that. I've heard people say that. Just, just yeah. I've heard people, I, 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 I didn't sign up for that. My point is that Saul could not do anything significant without, without going through an arresting phase, and you won't either. Don't preach that. Don't say that. I love the neat and tidy little testimonies, how everything just fell into place. But I'm talking about people that are called by God to do the kingdom of God stuff. Jesus knew it. He didn't. Thank you. He didn't have a stone. He didn't have a place to lay his head. You know, the, a lot of the mission trips I go on now, I, I stay in a five-star hotel. 
Sierra Leone, you won't stay in a, India, you won't stay in a five-star hotel. And of course, five-star hotel in Brazil is like $30 a night. But, um, but anyway, they, you go through, is this making sense? I mean, I'm not trying to bring curses on you. I'm just saying, uh, you know, when you get down and you wonder why things aren't working the way, I mean, I'm doing this thing for you, God. You, you understand that, don't you? I, you understand, God, we didn't need this building. You, you know that, don't you? Don't you? Don't you know I, we, don't need, we don't need to sign on the, this is, and this is just the beginning. We come in here and talk about the building and ah, offering meditation. I wish that man would be quiet. But, uh, you know, we're going to do something over here with the sprinklers, and I got $500 with the sprinklers as opposed to paying 25000 You know, the, the money is astronomical. The money is just astronomical. <clears throat> but we made it through this. We made it through that. And Zach and Sarah will make it to Montana. We made it to West Point. We knew we were supposed to do that. And we kept our house for five years. Put two different people there, cleaned it out twice, moved back in it after four or five years. And praise God, we owned that house after four or five years. We were able to, able to sell it to some buyers. So I'm just saying you go through that. Well, the end of the story is there's a cresting phase. In verses 8 through 11, God enabled Paul to work a miracle that shut Elymas down, bar Jesus down. Verse 12, a governor of Cyprus is saved. And many people, most people work as a community. Only America are we individual. Most everybody else in the world work as a community. They always have. They see the benefit in it. Instead of us being independent, I'm independent. And in verse 12, the governor, so if the governor is saved, guess what? Everybody else is going to get saved. They're, they're going to follow the leader. Verse 42, the people of Antioch can't hear enough. They said, it's 1236. Why don't you be quiet? No, they didn't. They just, they just couldn't hear enough of the glory of God. Verse 49, the word of God spread throughout the kingdom, throughout the people. Verse 52, disciples were full of joy and the Holy Spirit as they saw the miraculous power of God. Most every mission trip I've been on, I come back rejoicing and jumping and shouting. And my stomach's been torn up. I've emptied, you don't even want, you know, it's the, you don't, want, Kathy, you don't, I don't need to say that. You don't need to say that, you know, but the worst of the worst happens. And when the worst of the worst is happening, people get healed, the blind see, the deaf, uh, vans get there's a Samson moment. There's just, there's just those moments that, <laughs> that I wouldn't trade it for the world, you know? It was the hardest thing I went through, but it's the best because I could see the hand of the Lord. And if you look in chapter 13, the hand of the Lord was on them in verse 11, and some powerful things took place. And then in, verse, in chapter 11, trust me, in verse 21, the hand of the Lord was on a large number of people who believed and turned to the Lord. But in verse, uh, verse 11 in chapter 13, the hand of the Lord was on Elymas, and he was, struck, he was struck blind, and darkness fell on him. I'm telling you, if the hand of the Lord is on you, and you're walking with Jesus, some great things are going to take place. But if the hand of the Lord is on you and you're not with Jesus, then you might get struck blind. I choose Jesus this hour. I choose him to do miraculous things. And I know it's easy to be a spectator. It's so easy. I mean, that church is doing it, and that's a mega church, and they just come and worship God for an hour, and, and everything's happy, and, and they look like they're happy people. They, they really are. They drive a Mercedes, and they all go to this church, and they all are materialistically blessed, and, and it's a blessing sermon, and I, I get it. And, and I believe that we all are to prosper, but it just seems to be the way until you get to know the people, until they come to you and they tell their stories. My goodness, everybody's got a story. I just want to be in the hand of the Lord, and I want the hand of the Lord to be on us. 
And I pray right now that the hand of the Lord will be on us. I pray right now that his hand will be on us to do extraordinary things and wonderful things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you're doing. And we praise you, Lord, as we walk by faith, as we see the saints of old walking by faith, it just don't come easy. You know it don't come easy, but it comes to the place where we know we can trust you. And I'm just so appreciative of um, people this morning who are um, have given words and so forth. But I want to know who in here would like to give a word to somebody. Um, now I've done spilled the beans. How many in here have never given a word to someone? Okay. Out of that, how many people would like to give a word to someone? Okay. Young Andrea. Andrea? Andrea, can you come, Andrea? And uh, we're just getting equipped and ready to go. I like your words. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for Andrea. And uh, we just ask you to just uh, download the things. And I, I know your story. Andrea wants to do this. And uh, just pick out somebody that you think that God loves them. Just anybody, maybe somebody you don't know, maybe somebody you do know. Well, we'll, we'll take that next step. You may never speak to me again. This, this is the way to run off people, okay? Okay, you know, I've never done this before, so. Any? That's Jose. Okay. It's all right. Um, what was on your mind and your heart this morning? Or did God show you anything this past week, a scripture or something in your life or a dream this week or a picture? And I know you're being put on the spot. It's like, I don't know. But if you think about it, just for a moment, That I can trust him. Yeah. That I can trust him. Yeah. That's what God's been speaking on my heart is that he is my provider and that I can trust him with everything, with my provision, with my livelihood, with my family. I can trust him. And I guess. And so you've done it, but just. So you can too. Just, <laughs> just say, Ho Jose. Jose. You can and say all that that you just said. Jose, you can. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's going to be a little tingle. There's going to be a little, there's going to be a breath. There's going to be an unction. And so let that unction come. But if it doesn't, that's all right. You can trust him yeah. with everything. He knows what you need. He knows what you need, and he already has it for you. He already has it for you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And that's just not butterflies and lilies, because Scott told me, would you pray for Jose yesterday? And what you touched on, Jose, was that? It's, it's, it's just, <laughs> I don't have words, but thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank really, you for really your being here. That. Amen. Um, Amen. Yeah. yeah. So Scott told me, I have a double portion of microphone. Scott was telling me, you know, some things, pray for Jose. And so it's just, just right on target. Thank you. Would anybody else like to prophesy this never prophesy? 
Philip, come on up, buddy. I, um, since, uh, since Gavin, and, and we'll close off, and, but I wanted to do this at 12.15, and uh, the preacher wouldn't shut up. But, but Philip, uh, Philip has got a brilliant mind, and his mind is just going to shut off and let his heart. You know, the, the longest, and you've got a great heart. I'm not saying that, but the, the longest distance in the world is 15 inches from here to here. And uh, I had that prophesied over me uh, 20 years ago, 25. And I know that, that God is doing that to you also. So what kind of experience have you had this week? All right, use that. Wait a minute, be quiet. <laughs> Excuse me, Philip. I'm very blunt today. It's those de- <laughs> doggone angels, you know. Um, thank you, Lord. But, Philip, do you see anybody in the room? John Paul Jackson used to say, he said in 1995, he said, and I asked him, how do you how do you prophesy like that over people? He says, well, I just see God lights them up. God just, so for years I kept looking for a light, (laughs) (laughs) but it can be a smile. It can be kind of something that just, you know, you have a heart for like, like Brett, his, 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 his head, his, (laughs) is shining, you know, God is lighting Brett up. (laughs) And that might be, but it could be somebody else. Anybody that God is just, you know, for some reason you have a heart for them. It's really a, what? Yeah? Huh? Who? Yeah, Sue? Okay. So what's happening this week or a word or just something God's doing in your life? Pursue. Well, a good way of doing that. Kalabakashi da 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 ba da da. Kilele la kashi da da. Kasha ba da 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 da. Kola la 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 ba la kashi da da. Whoa, shubi. So this week he's been moving about travailing, you know, laboring in great effort to be able to move past the challenges. It's like the thing that came heavy on my heart was when, and Dwight kind of touched on it during service. He says, like, when he placed something in our life to be birthed, it, it has, it takes effort you know, but he's not going to bring us to the point of birth and not deliver. You know, so he says he's he that brought us through that is going to deliver what he's placed in there. So, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Does that resonate, Sue? I mean, and so we just pray for Sue right now. We pray, Lord. And just light that up and to know that he didn't bring you this far to leave you. And whatever he brings to birth, he's going to deliver. And thank you for this week being a week of transformation. We thank you, Lord, and for transformation for Sue. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, bro. Yeah, it'll come more. It'll come more. So let's... Let's do this. Let's all stand. And Lord, we pray for transformation this week. Thank you, Jesus. We are excited about faith. We're excited about doing great things for your kingdom. And whether it's doing small things or large things, it takes probably the same amount of faith. 
and whether we're moms and dads trying to make figure out things or whether we're freed to do ministry Lord we ask Lord Lord we thank we thank you Lord for new ideas birthing new ideas there you go we just ask Lord for the the thunder of your voice to be resounding in our spirit and that we can hear your voice this week Lord Give us dreams, Lord. Give us visions. Give us new ideas. We thank you, Lord, that great missionary trips, great missionary journeys are birthed out of the faith, even in the midst of an infectious enemy that wants to destroy and kill. Lord, let the hand of the Lord be on us. We pray, Lord, for a greater faith that we might be numbered with those in Hebrews 11, that we may have a greater faith, be willing to do whatever it takes for the glory of your kingdom. We're, we're saying yes, Lord, of just putting everything to the middle of the table. And Lord, we thank you as you invest in us and we see the things happening in our life and even in a place where the enemy has tried to kill, steal, and destroy, when it just looks like the wheels on the wagon were about to come off. And Lord, we pray that you would bring us to a place of being a conduit. We can do it. We can do it for you and your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to be known as, we want to be known, we want to be known of those of great faith. We may not be listed in a hall of fame anywhere or listed in a song or written down in a book of memories, but Lord, we want to be a people of great faith. You know, if we don't make a response, we'll just go home and cook ham sandwiches and eat eggs. You know, they can't pay, they can't pay me enough, <laughs> whoever they are, to do this. It's the kingdom of God. And see people lit up like Andrea and Philip. Leaders, let's take the next step and lead others into the kingdom of God and doing the kingdom stuff. And be that, yeah. But would you please just uh, hold your hands up like this? It's like, I'm saying, yes, Lord, I'm yours. And I praise you. I thank you that I can trust in you. We walk in faith in order to have trust. We become totally vulnerable to the Savior in order to trust him. We only do this and dissect what faith is about so that we can trust in Jesus. I know our hands are getting tired. We can trust in Jesus and walk with him shoulder to shoulder, brother to brother, sister to sister. We can walk together with him for your glory. Lord, we just pray that you would download your kingdom, that we would be ready in season and out of season. Open our eyes that we might see the opportunities for healing, opportunities of bringing the gospel of peace. Lord, we thank you that you're taking us into places where we've never gone before. 
Lord, we're going. We're traveling with you, Lord. We're traveling with you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to put my hands here because I'm tired. I don't know about y'all. <clears throat> but we're still receiving you, Lord. We're receiving you that life isn't the way that it always has been. <clears throat> One of our values is transformation, that we're changing. It may be more, Lord, more, Lord. Lord, I pray for a division in that seed, that that seed would, would, uh, would split and, be, and become even a bigger seed and a bigger seed. For that uh, that growth will continue in our life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Candy, just close this out, baby. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And we will pray for you up here. And so we bless you to go. We bless you to stay and hang out. We bless you to receive prayer. Pray with each other. If you want healing in any way, come on up. We always pray. Um, if you have any need, if you want specific prayer about the seed that is planted within you and you are birthing, come up here. We'll pray for you. And ministry, prayer ministers will be up here as well, not just us. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See some of you Tuesday night. <laughs>